you know, the latest and greatest. The problem is, is that if you use existing resources, and again, if it's the latest and greatest that's an existing resource, you know, you can, you can certainly deploy it, but you also have to go understand what is your end game? How many do you ultimately want to, to, to deploy? If you want to deploy 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, you need to make sure that whatever solution you put in is going to scale to that. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to run a test on 200, and if it works, okay, then I'm going to go full boat. You need to understand what the, what the stepping stones are to get to that 16,000 or, or 30,000 or, or 5,000. Um, again, design to desired scale. Um, amount of memory and memory performance, that is key. Memory is everything in, in, a, in a video uh, environment, so you need to make sure that your memory performance is, is, is up to spec. Um, you know, this is his, he actually said this. You know, everybody says that they're the best, right? And he said, only Cisco is. He says that to everybody. Right? I, I'm a big boy, I can, I can appreciate that. But he said, he said seriously, he said, you tell your customers if they ever want to want to talk to me, I'm available. Right? I will tell them because you guys are the only ones that deliver on what you said you would and deliver the performance that you said you would. So I've got, you know, we've got great customer references. Um, like I said, the, the, the benefit to this presentation is they are a Nexus 5000 customer, and that's what got them started down this path. Then they, um, they became a compelling customer, they're a VMware View customer, and they're a Cisco UCS customer. So, you know, if any, any of the technologies that you've seen here today or heard and want to learn more about, you know, we have, we have references. We have people that have been in the same situation that, that you are in um, that are making decisions for the next three years, four years, five years. But again, don't base what you think you know based on historical data because that is going to change. Requirements are going to change. Video alone in the next three years is supposed to triple the network. Right? And whether you're in education, whether you're in you know, regular corporate America, training in corporate America is all being done. A lot of it's being done on video now. Right? It's going to clog your networks. So just because you didn't, you don't see the need maybe for 10 gig now. You will. I'll tell you a quick story. The state of Michigan. State of Michigan, the ESX, um, I, had a, I had a meeting with the network team, and this was two years ago, two, two three years ago. And I said, I mentioned 10 gig, and one guy raised his hand and said, are you here to talk about 10 gig Ethernet? I said, yeah. He goes, we're barely pushing one gig. And you're telling us 10 gig? I said, well, I said, Let, let's back up a little bit. What are you what are you doing with that one gig? He's like, we're not pushing it. That's what we're doing with it. There was a guy in the corner, he raised his hand, he goes, guys, let me introduce myself. He said, I'm the VMware project lead for the state of Michigan. He's addressing his his other you know employees. They didn't know each other. And he said, what you don't realize is that in each one of our hosts, our ESX hosts, we have 16 one gig cables connected to a single server. And we have four fiber channel cables coming out of each one of these servers. He says the reason why we're not pushing one gig is because we're, we're barely pushing one gig, but we're doing it across 16 right, channels. And he said in order for, for the state of Michigan to reduce their footprint of physical servers from 5,000 to 1,000 in the next three years, by the way, they're nowhere close because they're still not talking very well. He said the only way we're going to do this is if we go to 10 gig. And that was very compelling for me and it, because so many times is within our own, whether it be agencies, whether it be our own companies, the communication just isn't there, right? They're siloed out. And the one thing that you're going to have to start to do if you haven't done it already is as you virtualize, you have to, you have to manage to that virtualized environment. It's a people and process issue. It's not necessarily technology. Technology is cool and you know, we can get up here and you know talk about it, but at the end of the day, it is the people and process issue within organizations that will either allow you to succeed or it will make you fail. And that has to be addressed. And it's one of economic. If we're not going to save you money, you're not going to buy Compellent, you're not going to buy Cisco, you're not going to buy VMware, you're not going to buy from, from NSI unless we show you a better way. We understand that. 
we're not trying to sell new technology for the sake of selling new technology. We're selling technology to let you do what ultimately you want to do. Does that make sense? <coughs> any any questions? Any anybody you know have anything for the for the group? I don't know if, if NSI had any any follow up to uh, to this. Mr. Tadovich, you want to say a few words? I'll come up and say a couple words. Wait, I don't fall down. <laughs> What's the lifespan of the UCS? What's the lifespan of the UCS? Yes. What do you need it to be? <coughs> what do, when you say the lifespan of the UCS? Yeah. And then they say, we were talking earlier about uh, bringing PCs in every three years or five years. What is the supported life cycle? Support, well, the supported life cycle. So at, at, as an example, Cisco's traditional, are you familiar with Cisco's support mm -hmm. model? Okay, so Cisco supported supported uh, model of any type of equipment that Cisco has is once they announce end of life of a product, they will still continue to support it for you know five years plus. Okay, so UCS, all it is, like I said, that the chassis itself, and by the way, we have rack servers as well. You know, as, as a matter of fact, Sam gave it the example. Sam's company that bought the, the rack servers that Cisco had. But UCS traditionally synonymous with our blade infrastructure. All the chassis is, is basically it's, it's a housing unit for, for blades. All the intelligence is built up into the Nexus, into the UCS manager component. As, as Intel comes out with you know, new chipsets, as uh, new DIMMs become available, right? We've gone from 8 gig to 16 gig to 32 gig. You know, there's going to be 64 gig and, you know, goodness knows what on the back end. We've gone from 1 gig, we've gone to 10 gig. We're now looking at 40 and 100 gig. All of that is planned upgradable in this chassis or in the blades themselves. So just because you buy UCS and buy some blades, um, you know, you bought them two years ago, the, the blades, those blades still have not been end of life. And then beyond that, we still have five years of maintenance, you know, should you choose to, to elect to do that, to keep them that long. So UCS, there is no planned obsolescence for UCS. And we are actually, the UCS managers, the UCS managers, we have varying levels. We have 6120s, 6140s, and we just introduced a new one. And in that system, there is no single point of failure, which also means that you can upgrade hot. You can upgrade your entire system. You can change out components without ever taking the system down. It's part of our architecture that we actually learned from Andiamo on the fiber channel switches because those are enterprise class, no single points of failure. We actually use that design to build you know, UCS. So that's what I mean. I'm saying is that UCS may be new to, you know, to the people in this room, um, and we've been deploying this technology for two years, but it has lineage all the way back to 1993 on what was successful, what wasn't, and we incorporated it into that. So whatever you buy today, even if we end up life it tomorrow, you've got five full years of, of support minimum. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. And, and if we ever do, I had this conversation at the at a state agency yesterday. If we ever do change the the chassis form factor, which I don't see us doing, because you know you can't go this way. A rack is a rack. You might go this way, but the only reason why we have it at six years is because we don't have the real estate requirement that our competitors do because we're not putting switches in there. We just recently went from 40 gig per fex to 80 gig. So we got 160 gig going to each chassis. We can have 40 gig going to a single blade. Right? That that is more than enough and we have plans going forward to do even more, but the technology hasn't caught up. We're basically building this based on what we know Intel is coming out with in, in three to four years or what we think Intel's coming out with in three to four years. Right. Does that make sense? So I'm going to